Welcome to the Mitchum History Notes YouTube channel. If you haven't done already, please subscribe. Do you remember the chalet over on the Tamworth Farm Recreation Ground? I asked my cousin Sheila about this recently. Her dad used to work in the parks department and he was one of the men who actually planted the flowers out the front. Here's what she said. There was the carpet bed that my dad did right in the front. Behind that was like a tea room. And then um, uh, behind that was sheds and um, potting shed where the council, mostly girls, would pot seeds and things to grow for the carpet bed. There's a lift of it with swings and roundabouts. Um, it was, you know, like the slide and the swings and a big roundabout. And to the right of it was a tennis court. It had about three or four tennis courts. One of the courts was red clay and my white pencils used to get covered in it. And the others was just um, hard court. I don't think it had a grass tennis court. No, it didn't. Um, and then at the back of all that was the allotments that led you into Rose Avenue. Was, was there a youth club there? The youth club was at the back of the allotments, mostly on Rose Avenue. It was called the Caxton Youth Club. The tea rooms that Sheila was referring to was known as the chalet. This black and white postcard, likely to be late 20s or early 30s, shows the bandstand and in the background the pavilion with the chalet written in large letters on the roof. Although I guess at the beginning of World War II that was taken off so as not to give the Luftwaffe any clues as to where they were. But what do we know about the history of the chalet, and in particular, the recreation ground that it was on? It was originally called the Tamworth Farm Recreation Ground. This Ordnance Survey map, from surveyed in 1865 on the National Library of Scotland's website, shows us Figs Marsh, and underneath it's written Tamworth Farm, but that's referring to the farm on the other side of the London Road, to the west of Figs Marsh on this map. Also of note is Biggin Farm up there in the top right hand corner of the map and the area came under the manor of Tamworth and Biggin. Eric Montague in his Mitcham Histories series number two North Mitcham tells that after World War I farming activity at Tamworth Farm had come to an end and a substantial acreage was purchased for house building by the new urban district council. The population of Mitcham had increased from 15,000 in 1901 to over 35,000 in 1921 and the former village was developing rapidly into a small town. Montague tells us that the site of the old farmstead together with what remained of its fields also passed into public ownership with, around this time thanks to the generosity and foresight of Thomas A. Mason of Rygate, a proprietor of a firm of source and condiment manufacturers whose factory was at Wandsworth. Passing through Mitchell one day in 1923, Thomas Mason noticed that the farm was for sale and quite informally broke his journey at the vestry hall to ask the clerk to the Mitchum Urban District Council, Stephen Chart, if his authority would accept the property as a gift, with £1,000 to put it in order. Mason's only stipulation appears to have been that the part of the land should be retained as permanent allotment gardens. The gift was accepted with gratitude and the donor's wishes have been observed to the present day. A pavilion and bandstand were erected by the council, and part of the land was used for the construction of Mitchum's first public tennis courts. The distinction was also claimed for the Tamworth Farm of being the first public recreation ground in Mitchum to have a court laid out expressly for the game of netball. To these amenities there were subsequently added a seven rink bowling green and a children's playground. So who was this Thomas Mason, and what was this firm of source manufacturers? This building at number 256 Merton Road in Southfields, Wandsworth, was built by the George Mason and Company for the manufacturer of its OK Source. The OK Source, as seen in this advertisement from the 1920s, consisted of pieces of fruit. And it's kind of amusing that this advert tells, us, tells the public that if you can't afford to buy fruit itself, you'll still get your supply of fruit from putting the sauce on your food which I don't think we'd actually wash today, but I quite like the idea. 
If someone says, you sure you had your fire today? I can say, yes, I've put sauce on my chips. <laughs> yeah. What Montague didn't tell us though, and actually it's not very easy to find out, this was how large the Tamworth farm was that Mr. Mason bought. Montague tells us that previously it had extended almost to 50 acres. And if we use a geo-reference map, we can find out the area of the current registered land. It comes to around 11 acres. Is it possible that Mr. Mason was not so altruistic as he's claimed, in as much that he probably bought a much larger area than he donated to the council, and the remainder was then sold off for housing? The only reminder that Mason had anything to do with the area here is this road, Mason's Place. But what happened to the chalet? Montague tells us that the bandstand was removed many years ago. In 1973, the local press reported that the recreation ground chalet had become a, quote, white elephant. Closure was considered, but the council felt obliged to retain it under the terms of the bequest. This bequest is recorded in a covenant in the current title to the land. In it we can see the agreement between Thomas A. Mason and the then Urban District Council, but the terms refer to this applying to all of their descendants. So the Urban District Council was replaced by the Mission Borough Council and now the London Borough Merton. And Thomas A. Mason and his descendants. So the covenant still applies. However, it would appear that the chalet fell out of use, became vandalised, perhaps even burnt down, and subsequently demolished. A planning application was put in in June 2003 to build a single-storey pavilion building to provide a children's day nursery, community facilities and cafe, together with landscaping. What remains today? Well, the Tamworth Farm Recreation Ground is now simply referred to as the Tamworth Recreation Ground. The tennis courts were refurbished in 2023 and are still available for free for anyone who wants to play tennis there. The walkway around the ground is, is still in use as seen in these photographs. The allotments are thriving. There is a separate organisation called the Tamworth Farm Allotments Society that maintains, maintains them and they're very popular. But Merton Council have actually ex taken part of the, the ground that was laid out for allotments for the extension of the London Road Cemetery. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. There will be many more videos to come. And leave comments. I'll always try and respond to comments. Bye for now.